two beliefs I have. One is because I'm from Bulgaria. I grew up in Bulgaria and left when I was very young. And I hadn't been up until the summer in Bulgaria for basically a dozen years. So going back with the Sorensen Fellowship was more than just going back for my Sorensen Fellowship. It was going back to see family that I hadn't seen for a very long time. But um, I had heard stories of Bulgaria and I had remembered a lot of things. I had a lot of memories in Bulgaria that were very dear to me. And a lot of them were stories about either my grandfather, who was a para, who was an ambulance driver, or my aunt, or my great aunt, or all these other family members who had such interesting birth stories. And I had had this idea that justice starts in the delivery room. That if you're going to want to put social justice to action, you're going to have to do it at the very beginning. Every baby should get an equal start. That kind of the, that that message has resonated with me with my work through the March of Dimes with um, pretty much everything I've ever tried to do with my life. And so I was ready to go to Bulgaria to intern um, in this Bulgarian obstetrics hospital. And my grandmother and everyone had said, be very careful about what you're going to see, what you're going to experience, and really get tough skin because you're going to be judged, you're going to have a difficulty accepting some of the customs, you're, not, you're going to have a very hard time. And I go to Bulgaria, and of course this is true, but I could have not ex expected anything, anything at all. Because in the very first few days, I was basically told that I was supposed to watch abortions. And then I was also supposed to help assist, kind of out of the blue, I, was only, thought, I only thought that I was going to watch a surgery, and then I was holding and blotting blood because there was no one else to do it and and then I was asked to assist in other things and then it was just so much but really what struck me the most was when I finally had the chance to go into the NICU this was my thing I wanted to go to the NICU so bad and so I go with, um, this, uh, with this doctor that I had made friends with. She spoke English and spoke Bulgarian, so we were very happy because we could communicate very well. And we, we go into the NICU together, and there's a sea of, like, uh, not a sea, but a lot of babies. And she's like, yeah, you, can, you have the shots, you can go touch one. I'm like, really, really, can I touch one? And like, obviously, I'm excited as can be. And I run and I see the mo I see one baby that like has the cutest hair. I think I ha there's a picture of me holding him, and he has a IV in his in his head because they only have adult size IV IVs, and the vein on his head was the largest one that they could find that would fit. So they really had they were searching for veins that would fit the IVs, not the IVs that would fit the veins, and. Um, Anyways, and I pick it up, pick it up, and I say, "Oh my God, this is so adorable!" And and all these nurses in the NICU start staring at me and say, "How out of all these babies did you pick that one?" And I said, "What? It's cute, <laughs> <laughs> right?" And it was not those exact words because I forgot how exactly uh, I'm forgetting how some of the words were, but basically that was the conversation. <laughs> And I found out that I was holding the only gypsy baby in the NICU. And I was very frustrated with that. And ever and since that experience came a barrage of outlets, outright, ruthless, mean, disgusting discrimination of Roma mothers to the point where I came home crying every day and the only thing that would make me feel better is watching <coughs> landscape and being welcomed by hundreds of butterflies in my doorstep, which actually happened. But really, it was just like a very tough thing. And then I had my great grandmother, who I hadn't seen for 12 years. And she, one, and one night, I'm telling her about all these things that I'm seeing. And she says the most amazing thing, which is the exact same thing that Abraham Varghese, who is my idol, he's a physician writer, he is my idol. And he says, he, he talks about how the, the human touch is the best medicine there is. 
and he really cares about the, uh, the patient-physician relationship, and that's something I also very much care about. And this 80-something-year-old woman, she sits down with me, and she tells me, you know, doctors don't know how to be doctors anymore. They touch you with your clothes on. And that, was a, that rang so much in my head, and that was a breaking point in my internship where I was like, nope, I'm not going to be a, a, a ghost anymore in the hospital. I'm not going to just like do what everybody wants me to do and, 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 not sh and, be, and shut up when I need to like honestly want to do what I want to do. And that, and from then on, I held, you know, Roma mother's hands during deliveries. I talked to them when they were in labor, when no one else wanted to, or when they were being yelled at for screaming, because obviously you're not supposed to scream during a, you know, when you're in labor. And, um, <laughs> It was a very frustrating experience, and I think this frustration is coming out right now, and I did not want that to happen. <laughs> but anyways, basically, since my grandmother kind of, my great-grandmother kind of said that, that was a point in my journey where I decided, yep, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I want to deliver babies, and I want to hold um, the mother's hand and make sure that every delivery is just and equal and that every baby gets um, kind of like the kind of welcome you really need to get, like the kind that Kate Middleton's baby got, which was tons of attention, while at the same time a baby I assisted, you know, uh, whose, whose C-section delivery I assisted, you know, got, what an ugly gypsy baby. The first thing that ca they came out as, uh, you know, as um, came out of someone's mouth as he came out of the mother's uterus, and so why can some baby get that and then some other baby get like a couple spreads of a magazine? Because, like, how is that fair, right? And so that um, that kind of was what really t took away that summer. Mm -hmm and I want to share with you, and um, as a result right now, I'm going to Copenhagen in about less than 10 days to look at patient-physician relationships again, and I'm also working with DICE Impact to make sure that, um, you know, the issues of Roma mothers and Roma parents and families over Europe also get hurt. So it kind of made me, like, inspired to do a lot of different things and really just the Swords of Fellowship wasn't just a stopping point, it was a beginning, and I think it was a beginning for every one of us. It was kind of like a time in our lives where we were like, yep, this is what we want to do, and this is how we're going to do it. And if we don't know how it's gonna, if we're going to do it, we're going to do more things to figure out how we're going to do it. So, so that's what I want to share with you guys.